I've not seen such bravery. Before we get started today, I want to take this time to let you know that this is your fault. Oh, oh, Ian, why don't you play new games? Why are all the games you play so old? Alright then, let's take a look at something new. On February 26, 2014, Blue Bee Games released the abomination that is Iron Soul to the world. The official website claims that the game has some amazing features such as two Tory-focused campaigns and various environments. The levers are fully optimized and hold many challenges and secrets. Well, if the levers are half as good as this website is, then I'm guessing we're all in for a treat. The narrator of the opening cinematic wields the English language about as skillfully as Shia LaBeouf falls out out of relevancy. If one day some evil alien race decides to come to us, we should be more prepared. Yeah. So from what I can tell, the government started building a bunch of robots because they were afraid that an evil alien race would invade. Also, they made a lot of acronyms that don't mean anything because I guess they're too lazy to actually come up with names. So from my understanding, the GSF group makes NROs, which are machines controlled by a single intelligence core. But don't they realize that hypothetical Hypothetical aliens aren't the only danger to us? The hypothetical aliens- I mean, what happens when core of the machine falls into less desirable hands? Now that we actually get to see some of the game's visuals, I mean, it's not bad. Sure, the robot designs look like walking eyeballs and everything is very brown, but I've seen much worse graphics. So many lives at stake. They've got to hurry up. Oh God, are the subtitles going to be different than what they're actually saying? Come on, they've got no time. Oh, well, okay then. So this guy pushes some buttons as the robot eyes break into his office here, and then he springs into action. And by spring into action, I obviously mean that he hides behind a box. You know, some games and movies use slow motion to show something dramatic or awesome, but not Iron Soul. Iron Soul uses slow motion to show an old man falling to the ground while admitting a pathetic... <laughs> It's like a really bad life alert commercial. So here we are in all of our mechanic glory as the scientist just kind of leaves. So to make sure we're all on the same page here, this is the story as I understand it. The GSF group makes NROs, or what normal people would call robots. All of the robots turn evil, so this scientist builds us. A robot that needs to, I don't know, kill all other robots in the world maybe? But who knows? I mean, the evil aliens were hypothetical, so maybe this whole situation is hypothetical as well. There's a few things we can observe from the first few seconds of gameplay here. Number one, the game still doesn't look awful. I mean, yeah, the color palette is complete trash, but that seems to be pretty standard for anything trying to be gritty and cool these days. Number two, I'm breathing, which is strange because I'm a robot. Now, it could be that I'm a gasoline-powered robot and my mouth is like a tailpipe or something. But what's even stranger is that I'm actually going through a breathing animation. Robot or cyborg, you decide. Because honestly, I don't really care. Number three, kicking stuff is fun. <laughs> Still working properly. Who's that? Is that Mario? He can start with some super basic moves. Really easy stuff. Nope, it's just what the game's Steam badges refer to as the annoying voice, whose portrait bears a striking resemblance to McGruff the Crime Dog. He's here to tell us all about the controls, which are odd. Aside from the normal WASD to walk and control to crouch, you have to hold down the right click just to be able to shoot. Then, if you want to zoom in a bit, you hold Q. Now, I realize some of you out there might not be PC gamers, so let me just inform you that this is really dumb. You also can't jump while aiming, but that's not as bad as the jump itself. I'm a super advanced machine, and I've got the athletic ability of a high schooler on the junior varsity track team. What's even worse is that Mario McGruff is bragging about it. Like, Oh wow, dude, look at how high you jump. But that's okay, because apparently we get a jump booster eventually. It's just been misplaced by some guy named Cyrus. His feeble Persian mind couldn't handle a single enemy raid. Do you see 
anything wrong here? Anything at all that might be missing from this scenario? Oh, I don't know. Maybe some crosshairs, an arrow, or perhaps even a yellow brick road that I could possibly follow to figure out where the hell I'm shooting? I mean, seriously, you can't even follow the gun barrel because the bullets just go wherever they feel like going. You force me to use an aiming mode, and you don't even let me aim. You know what, Iron Soul? F you. Which of course is my abbreviation for, I find that unreasonable. The default gun in the game doesn't have an automatic setting. I mean, that doesn't seem like the worst thing in the world at first, but after a while it just gets tiring having to click so much in battles. Lucky for us, we do get a machine gun later on, but without the crosshairs, it's even more impossible to tell where the bullets are actually going, so I guess you just have to decide which is the lesser evil. Can you hear me, son? Yeah, okay, dad. So does this mean I'm at least some part human? Or is this guy just calling me son because he built me? I mean, I put together my own office chair, but you don't see me taking it to any father-son picnics. Father Dearest's name is Cyrus, and it appears that someone has hacked into most of his systems. Lucky for me, he installed some anti-hacking measures on my hardware so I'm safe. Now, why weren't the rest of his systems installed with anti-hacking measures? Because this is Iron Soul, and if it made any sense, then it just wouldn't be Iron Soul. With our only instruction being, go find supplies, we trudge forward and find something truly exciting. Bonus items! Did you hear that, guys? Bonus items! These incredibly rare bonus items make this number here go up, which I can only assume is our total score. Because although the developers made sure to throw in enough lens flares to make Michael Bay take notice, they can't design a heads-up display for crap. These two circles here look like they might mean health and shield, right? Well, they don't. They're just circles. And oh look, two green dots that also mean nothing. But hey, at least the number representing our health is off-center, right? It's like built-in OCD repellent. And as you collect these, these four circles light up. And once they reach maximum power, nothing happens. I don't get it. But hey, at least we can also collect items. Horrible shooting mechanics aren't the only part of Iron Soul, though. There's also horrible platforming mechanics. The height of our jump seriously baffles me. I mean, at some points it looks like I don't even leave the ground. But never fear, because... Can you say double jump? It's less of a double jump and more of an extended single jump. I don't really go any higher, but I stay the same height for a bit longer. Oh, and did I mention these things? They're called digital bridges. I don't really have anything else to say about them. I just thought that was a really dumb name. And speaking of dumb things, try this one on for size. I was walking through this door here, but then saw something turn red, so instinctively I backed up. Then the door closed, forever locking me out of this part of the level. I was unable to advance until I loaded a save file. And good thing I did, because the gameplay drastically changes when you go through this door. Oh, did I say drastically changes? Because I meant to say that nothing ever changes. The game can't even grace us with different different enemy designs, they're just eyeballs and worms. Now right now I'm guessing I've split my viewers into two separate camps. Over here we've got the, this game's not so bad, you're picking on it too much camp. And over here we've got the, oh man this game is awful, it couldn't possibly get any worse camp. Both of you hold on for a second, cause it gets worse. Welcome to the first boss battle. As you can see, the designers are really stretching their creative muscles here by just scaling up one of the only two enemies we've seen thus far. And when I say first boss, I should clarify. This is the only boss, at least when it comes to my playthrough. It isn't exactly complex. You just hide from the laser, jump to avoid the shockwave, and shoot at the thing, right? The problem is that the giant eyeball doesn't die. Not only that, but it doesn't even show any signs of getting damaged. I mean, it lights up a little bit when I hit it, but it doesn't have any different different cycles or phases that it goes through. It just keeps doing the same thing over and over. And I tried, oh how I tried, and I just couldn't beat it. So I did what anyone else would do in this situation, and I looked up some let's play footage of the boss to see if maybe I did something wrong. And oh, did I see something wrong. First off, you'll notice that there are crosshairs here. As it turns out, buried in the menu system of the game is the option to turn on the crosshairs. Yeah, you know what game, that's totally normal. Most games force you to blind fire until you search in the menus and find the setting that lets you actually see where you're shooting. But what's even worse, what's oh so worse, is the heads-up display. It's 
functional. Sure, it's not pretty, but that is clearly showing how much shield and health they have left, and the red circle is actually going down with their health. But the real problem, the biggest problem of this whole situation, is over here. This is the boss's health meter. As the boss is shot, his health goes down, rather quickly at that. It also has this handy number that shows how much health is left. That's cool, right? Even though my heads-up display didn't show the circle moving, I still died when my health hit zero. But the boss's health doesn't even have a number, so it can't hit zero. That means, as far as I can tell, that he's invincible, which means that I spent about half an hour trying to kill something that the game had no intention of ever letting me kill. Wait a minute, hold on, let me check to see if there's a make this game not complete shit button. No, there isn't. And why is it like this? I mean, it's on Steam, it's not like I bought a scratch disc or something. I just downloaded it. Garbage. Absolute garbage. I mean, they didn't even bother to spell check the damn thing. What is that? Res result? Nope, no. It's over. I mean, I can't even get past this boss, so is there even a point in me talking about this game anymore? Are you happy now? Now that I've played something new and hip and modern? Are you satisfied? Are you gonna leave me alone? Hello, hello, and thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook where you can see me complain about other things, I suppose. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos as well. You can click on them here. What? Yeah, bonus items! Yeah! Yeah! Bonus items! Yeah!